Hello, welcome back to 10 Minute Science, where we pick a topic, we dive in, and we learn something absolutely amazing in 10 minutes or less. And today, we're gonna talk about when we take water and we freeze it and it forms ice, why does ice float on the surface of liquid water? But more importantly, if you stick with me to the end, we'll discuss why that is absolutely critical for life to exist at all. So we wanna dive into the molecular aspect of water and how it turns into ice and try to understand this because it's quite different than other materials that you have everyday experience with. So what we wanna do is, uh, we're not gonna save the punchline for the end. We're gonna talk about the punchline right here in the beginning. Here is a model of a molecule of water. Now, if you take my chemistry class, we go into a lot more details here. But you can see that here we have H2O, right? So we have two hydrogens. Hydrogens are the white balls, and we have one oxygen in the middle. Now, notice that this water molecule is not a straight line molecule like, like this uh, pen, is, it, it, pen is here. It's a bent molecule, right? Now, the reason it's bent, we'll go into a lot more detail in my class, but basically there are extra electrons up here that I haven't shown that are up above this oxygen here, which are pushing the hydrogens down at an angle. Now, it's critical that not only is water bent like this, but the details of how the electrons are existing around here is critically important to understanding why and how water freezes and behaves the way it does. So remember this in the back of your mind as we draw the pictures that water is a bent molecule. So as you know, water is H2O. This is how we typically write it, but it's more interesting to draw the shape of this thing, which I've already shown you here. And we just said that there's an oxygen molecule flanked by two hydrogens, but you might think that these are kind of off straight to the side as a straight molecule, but actually as we just showed, these are bent at an angle. Now, when you get into chemistry, you can calculate this exact angle. The exact angle isn't that important uh, for this particular lesson. What we need to focus on is what these, this, uh, these things mean right here. These lines uh, between the oxygen and the hydrogen, this is electron sharing. You, you might, if you've taken chemistry, you, you know that this is called a covalent bond. Cooperate. You know, you know what that means, covalent. It means the two valen uh, valence electrons nearby are coexisting in a bond, covalent bond. So what's happening is an oxygen electron and a hydrogen electron are kind of hanging out in the middle as a pair and they're bonding here and holding these guys together and the same thing is happening here. Now critically what we need to talk about is oxygen can actually pull the electrons closer together because of details that we'll get into when we have a little more time, but basically it arises because of the protons in the nucleus of the oxygen can pull and have more what we call electronegativity. It can pull the electrons closer. So even though we're sharing electrons be between these atoms here, because oxygen can pull them a little stronger, we say that there's a very slight negative charge here. Now don't get scared by this little Greek symbol delta. It's just a symbol that means there's a slight negative charge on the oxygen atom because it's pulling these electrons a little closer to the oxygen. But since it's pulled closer to the oxygen, that means there's a slight positive charge on the hydrogen atom and a slight positive charge on this hydrogen atom. So going back to this model here, Right? All it means is that these black sticks means that electrons are being shared here, but because oxygen can, can suck them in, so to speak, uh, a little bit tighter, the oxygen atom here has a very slight negative charge. And the hydrogen atoms have a very slight positive charge. Now, when a, when a molecule like this has one side of it positive and the other side of it negative, in chemistry, we actually call that polar. So we call water a polar molecule. Polar molecules are great for dissolving things and, and other things as well. Also, water being polar like this with the charges on the atoms is critical for life to develop. That's why we're mostly made of water because when things can dissolve, then you can have lots of chemistry happening. That's why it's important for that. So we've established that because there are extra electrons up here, this is a bent molecule. We've established that the oxygen is a little bit more negative than each of these hydrogens here. So essentially we have a water molecule that is charged differently on both ends. Now let me remind you that these charges, because of the electrons, these are what we call electric charges and this they give rise to electric forces. So if you have two of these water molecules or more of them in a glass of water, they're going to interact with each other because what's going on when you have water at room temperature, these things are crashing into each other. They're bouncing off the walls, they're bouncing off each other. But the white balls here 
are charged, as we can see up here, positively, and the oxygens here are charged negatively. So you know like charges repel, right? So if the two oxygens, as they're bouncing off of each other, come this way, they're gonna want to repel. If the two hydrogens come together, they're gonna want to repel and bounce off. But if one of these uh, uh, oxygens and hydrogens get close together, they're gonna wanna attract. But you see, at room temperature, at room temperature, when everything's crashing around, even though they're trying to be attracted to each other, they can still bounce off because there's so much thermal energy in the molecules at room temperature. That's why water is liquid at, at room temperature. And at room temperature, these molecules can slide past each other. Notice how they can kind of get very close to each other. Now, what's gonna happen as we cool it down? That's what we need to focus on. So they're bouncing off of each other, but slower and slower and slower. The white, when they bounce, the hydrogens, when they hit, they're still gonna wanna bounce off because they're repelling. But when they start moving slower, maybe this guy hits and gets stuck for a second and then bounces off because it's attracting. You see, the, this is a, uh, as we said right here, a positive charge and the oxygen's negative. It wants to attract. Eventually, if we cool it down low enough, it's going to wanna stick into place. Notice in the liquid state, they can get very close together like this, but in the solid state, because of the attraction of the hydrogen and the oxygen, they actually have to form a much larger structure. So water expands as it freezes. That's the punchline. Water expands as it freezes. That is something we take for granted, but that is something very, very weird. Because what happens is most substances, when they get colder, because they start moving uh, slower and slower, they just contract. Iron, when it gets colder, it contracts. Alcohol, when it gets colder, it contracts. Lead, when it gets colder, it contracts. Water, when it gets colder, oh, it expands. Why? Because of the charges on these atoms, because they get locked into place, they get locked into a larger position. And we can see that over here. I wanna show you a better picture of that. So this is the crystal lattice of ice. And you can see I have the same kind of molecules running around here. Uh, as I do over here. I want to study this for a second. And notice what's going on. In the, in the ice state, notice what's going on. Here you have this oxygen and there's a hydrogen here, but the hydrogen is, is pretty close to the next oxygen over because it's attracted. This hydrogen is attracted to this oxygen. This hydrogen is attracted to this one. This hydrogen is attracted to this one and so on. And so they're attracted because of what we talked about a minute ago because it's polar. And when the thermal energy, when we cool it down and they stop moving so much, then they get locked into this position. But these atoms are farther apart. These molecules are farther apart than water can exist in the liquid state here. And so ice expands. This is a visual representation of why ice expands because it gets locked into this lattice like this. This is the main punchline, all right? Now you might look at this closely and say, well, wait a minute, he's got a couple of molecules here that don't look right. This one has an o a single uh, ox uh, oxygen or hydrogen here and one oxygen here. Where's the other? Uh, hydrogen. Well, you see in this particular one right here, what you've got going on is one of them is going into the board. This one's drawn like this, where the hydrogen is coming down. There's another one going into the board that you can't see. And this one over here is attracted to another oxygen out of the plane of the board. And so this lattice for ice exists in three dimensional space towards you, away from you and across the board as well. Now, why does it make water ice float, right? Why does it make water ice float? Well, it's because the density of anything is equal to the mass divided by the volume of the substance, okay? So if we have a glass of water, and here's some water here, and I take a cubic little area out here, and let's say I turn this thing into ice. I can just freeze this little bit right here and turn to ice. Remember the density of the substance is mass divided by volume, but we just said that if I turn this into ice, it's gonna get bigger. The volume's gonna get bigger. So when we freeze ice, because the volume actually gets bigger, the density gets smaller. And in order for something to float on a liquid, its density has to be smaller than the liquid you're floating in. When the density is smaller, then the liquid you're floating in, then you float. If the density is bigger, then you sink, right? But because the volume gets bigger, the density gets smaller, and that's why ice actually uh, floats to the surface. Now, what happens, this is the punchline for why it's important. When we take liquid water and we freeze it, what happens to it? Well, because it tends to float whenever it uh, freezes, what means is there's a thin layer on the top right here. 
this is a thin layer of water ice. Anytime it freezes, it floats to the surface. And that means that this forms an insulator for any fish that are swimming in the bottom uh, or, or whatever. All ponds, lakes, rivers, streams, they all freeze from the top. And that top forms an insulating layer of ice which protects the bottom from freezing further and of course allows life to develop. If it were reversed, like if we lived on a planet full of methane or something, it would freeze from the bottom up, it would have a frozen solid lake and no life could ever develop. So that is why ice floats on the surface of water and why that, that concept, that idea is critical for life as we know it to develop.